Good evening, everybody. I'm not really a hunched over the walls, but I'm forced to say, well, this is because of the microphone. Welcome to the 2000 International Space Development Conference Annual Awards Banquet. Welcome to the City of Tucson. It's my pleasure, as Chairman of the Board of Directors and Chair of the Executive Committee of the National Space Society, to welcome you all here this evening. I thank you all for uh, taking the time on a, a beautiful Sunday evening to come out to our event. We have a lot of things on the program for this evening, so I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I want to particularly thank the organisers of this conference who have done such a wonderful job. Uh, for those who have ever been involved with a conference like this, it's an enormous amount of effort. And they've worked tirelessly... Sorry, next message is, I can't get closer to the mic. Um, they've worked tirelessly to bring this all about, including this beautiful dinner that you're going to enjoy this evening. We have a fairly busy schedule, so what we have planned, uh, we're very delighted and honoured to have our president, the president of the National Space Society, and veteran shuttle commander Dan Lamberson as our master of ceremonies this evening. We have a lot of interesting things to do. The general plan for this evening is food will be served pretty much immediately, and then as soon as dessert is concluded, we'll move on to the formal part of the proceedings. So once again, my welcome on behalf of the NSS leadership to this conference. Welcome to this conference. I can't wait to start again. Uh, so please enjoy your dinner. If you missed it all, ask somebody if you hear what I said. And uh, we'll get proceedings underway probably close to about 8 o'clock when you've finished your dessert. So thank you and enjoy the evening. International Space Development Conference. I want to take this opportunity to just talk a little bit about some of the achievements of NSS so far this year. It's only May, but we really have had a very active year, and I just want to share a few of those things with you while I have all our membership here. I know a lot of you who are very interested in, in what we do uh, let us know that, that you don't feel you hear enough about our activities. So, just as a brief update, I think most of you will have had copies of the educational supplement that we produced uh, early this year for the March premiere of the movie Mission to Mars. Uh, we did that with uh, some very generous support from Lockheed Martin. And I think you should be very proud to know that that supplement, as well as being included in Ad Astra, our own magazine, reached more than 3 million households. And that's before you start to talk about web hits. That's 3 million households that print copies reached uh, through working with a lot of newspapers who have educational inserts. So we were very proud of that program, and that was uh, the major effort that we worked on first thing this year. In an effort to try to communicate better with you, and, and in a more timely manner, and in a more up-to-date manner, we also launched our new NSS online report, uh, which you've been receiving monthly. I think we've now put out three, am I right, Nancy? 
three. And if you have not given us your email address and you would like to be on the distribution list for the online report, please see one of the staff. Nancy and Vivian are here. I'm here. Let us have your email address because many of you who've been members for years were not asked for an email address when you joined, obviously, and we haven't collected them from everybody. So uh, this is an appeal. If you have an email address, you're not getting the monthly news uh, e-zine or electronic newsletter, please let us hear from you because we'd like to get you on that distribution list. The next really exciting thing that we did was we organized the 25th anniversary banquet for Apollo 13. As most of you know, both Tom Hanks and Jim Lovell are on our board of governors, and Captain Lovell came to me and specifically asked us if we'd be prepared to organize this celebration. And it happened just a few weeks ago in Santa Monica at the Museum of Flying. And we had a big crowd, rather larger than we have here, in fact. And uh, it was a benefit for ourselves and the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation. And uh, I'm proud to be able to tell you that uh, we made about $70,000 on that event. Now this is an election year, and so we've been beginning to engage with policy issues. Uh, most of you, I hope, will have seen our Campaign 2000 website go up, and we are going to be doing some more active things for our grassroots campaign. The summer is coming. Candidates will take a big break in the summer to go home to their constituencies to start campaigning in earnest. And we want you to go and talk to your candidates for Congress and convince them that space may not have to be an issue in the campaign. I, I think I've been misleading you to suggest that space is an issue. It's not high on the political agenda. and The parties, quite honestly, have already decided what they're going to fight the campaign on. But what I'd like you to try to convince candidates is that they need to have an opinion about space. They need to think about the contribution it's making to our future. And let them know that if they ignore space, they do so at their peril. If we do not make advances in space exploration, if we don't continue to push the way towards the space frontier and open the space frontier for our children and grandchildren, it will be those children who suffer because space development drives technology development, keeps the economy strong, and the fact that we're not looking beyond space station right now is detrimental to our future. So I encourage you to go to the website and uh, follow it as we develop our grassroots campaign there. At this conference, we've done two major policy-related things. We've launched a campaign called 1% for the Future. And for any of you who, well I know quite a lot of you weren't at the presentation yesterday morning. There are many more in this room than there were there. This campaign is a campaign that we're going to launch again, going to the Congress, to encourage them in the future to identify in a line item 1% of NASA's budget, which at the moment would be about $140 million a year. $140 million of a $40 billion dollar budget total. To identify that money specifically for programs, technology development, towards the future of humans in space. So that those aspects of the research that NASA funds don't have to be done as covert operations, hidden away in other programs, that it's justified on its own merits for planning for our future. And we're really excited about that, and we think it's a very easy way to focus on putting money aside for our future, and we hope Congressman will react to it. And again, we'll be putting material up at the website to help you go and convey that message. 
Yesterday morning also, we launched our new roadmap to the future. Uh, we have been involved in a strategic planning exercise now for two years in NSS. And we launched into this because we could see how rapidly the space exploration environment was changing. And we wanted to make sure that we were still relevant and, and as effective as we possibly could be. And as part of that, we had a policy summit last fall, and we came out of it with the roadmap. And that document will be up at the website in the coming week. But as those of you who are familiar with it will know, this, a central part of that, and the part that we really want you to go to work on, and to work with us on, is the removal of barriers, the barriers that our membership have identified as barriers to the future and barriers to space settlement. And, and just for those of you who weren't there, the barriers that we've identified, there are 13 of them. The first is no long-term government funding mechanism. And you know how the government works. I don't have to tell you. It's very hard to fund programs that are not going to be completed for six or eight or ten years in a consistent manner. Lack of incentives for private capital investment. Space commerce is growing. There's a larger and larger commercial element. But it is extremely difficult to get started in space business. And we want to draw attention to that. Lack of affordable space transportation. Cheap access to space. We still need it. It's the, one of the major things we need. We can't do meaningful uh, space commerce, space business won't really work for us until access to space is cheaper. And uh, for those of you who follow the NASA budget, you'll know that there, this year's budget is now under threat, has been reduced in the, in the markup in the House, and one of the two things that were taken out last week was the money for a new space launch initiative program which would have funded some new research on space launch vehicles, reusable vehicles. And we'll be going to bat for that to be restored when I get back to Washington. Lack of sovereignty. It's very hard for a company to go do business on the moon if they can't claim the rights to the place where they're doing the work. And lack of sovereignty, of course, relates largely to legislation that was put in place because only governments were doing things in space when the Moon Treaty and the Outer Space Treaty were put in place. And those are things we're addressing. Liability insurance. I won't go into that in any great detail, but again, it's a major cost factor and we need to look at it quite carefully. We're worried about a whole, a whole slew of things. We'll put all these 13 barriers up on the website. I, I won't go on through the list, but I do encourage you to look at them. Uh, we need to think about things like property rights, about passenger qualification for getting to space. And look at your Ad Astra, because there is a summary of the roadmap in there as well. And this is something that will be the focus of our major push through the continuation of this year. Uh, we'll be talking with the media about the roadmap, and we do want to engage you in working with us on it as well. Before we move on with today's program, I would like to just pass on to you um, a very sincere apology from Hugh Downs, who, as you're aware, is not with us. Uh, some of you may have seen the program he did from Egypt last week. He got back from Egypt uh, just in the early hours of Saturday morning after a horrendous journey. Uh, his wife got sick out there and is not at all well. And he decided uh, between his exhaustion and Ruth being unwell that he just could not join us tonight. Uh, he did send us his very best wishes for a successful conference and an enjoyable event, and his very sincere apologies for not being here. And now I'm going to hand the podium over to our president. Uh, Dow Brownenstein joined us as president at the end of 1998. 
Uh, he is currently with Lockheed Martin, but most of us know him uh, as a four-time shuttle astronaut, shuttle commander, and for quite a period, head of the astronaut office. And Dan is going to be our master of ceremonies for tonight. Dan.
Okay, and then, uh, then you come along with the question, well, did you see any aliens or any UFOs? Do you believe in UFOs and, and all that? So, so be prepared for that one. And then how do you sleep in the zero gravity? And that uh, varies on the individual. You know, some, some people, we, we have sleeping bags, and uh, you kind of have two classes of, of people the way they like to sleep. Some like to sleep, uh, feel all tucked in. And, and for that crowd, uh, you have a sleeping bag, and it's got velcro straps, you put it across, you got a pillow. But obviously in zero gravity, you can't, you know, your head won't stay on a pillow, so then there's a strap, and so you strap your head to the pillow. You know, and, and then you pin yourself against the wall. And uh, that's the way the tucked in crowd slept. Now, you don't get to go to space very often and, and spend, you know, five, six, seven, twelve, whatever, zero gravity. But uh, the other group, of which I was that part, uh, considered it the ultimate waterbed. So uh, you just kind of go to sleep, you just close your eyes and go to sleep. And uh, there, there's some inter interesting things happen uh, in, in that environment, because when, when you go to sleep, uh, you know, all your muscle forces balance out. So you kind of end up in the ground proofing position, uh, ground proofing position, if you're familiar with that. I don't know if that's as popular as when I was younger. That was the, they were teaching everybody how to ground proof. But, uh, <clears throat> but basically, you kind of end up on over and, and floating like that. Well, there, there's some interesting concepts or e events can happen around that. I don't know if you haven't ever slept. Uh, if you kind of wake up in the middle of the night and you don't, you're, you're sort of conscious, but you're not really, you, you kind of know where you are, but you're not quite sure. Well, that can happen in zero gravity too when you're sleeping up there floating like that. And you think about it, if, if all your muscle forces are balanced out and, and your arm is not on a pillow or not on the bed, it's just floating there, there's no sensual feedback from your arm to your head. So you kind of come up in this half wide, half awake, half asleep mode, and you can't feel your arms. It's like, you, know, you, you, you gotta look to be sure you got an arm. Uh, but, you know, it's usually there, so that works out. Now, at least, remember, I, keep you, I hope you're taking notes, because when you go to guys fly in space, you gotta be ready for this. Uh, okay, then, then you always get asked, well, what's the moon like? And, and you, you should get asked that from politicians because even though they uh, you know, fund the program, they don't realize that the shuttle doesn't go to the moon. Uh, but, uh, so you explain that the shuttle is you know, low Earth orbit and uh, you don't get to go to the moon and, and all that. Then uh, you ask quite often, uh, did you have a spiritual experience? You know, the folks, some of the folks that went to the moon came back significantly changed in their spiritual outlook. Uh, and uh, from my experience in the, in the shuttle program, I don't know of anyone that has that type of experience, uh, you know, flying on the shuttle. Uh, I always have a Navy pilot's explanation for everything, and, uh, and, and the explanation for that is, when they went to the moon, you, you really left and you look back and you see the pictures of the little blue planet, and, and, and you're really separated from Earth. At 200 miles, I mean, you're still part of the Earth, uh, you know, it's... You can see a nice curvature to the Earth, and the horizon is about 1,600 miles away, but, but you aren't way out there looking back. So uh, what really is going to be interesting is when they go to Mars. Now you figure you're halfway between Mars and Earth, and there's not a little blue planet down there, and there's not a crater thing out there, and there's a little spot of light back there, and there's a little spot of light where you're going. So uh, that's going to be a real experience. So you young folks here that are going to go to Mars, think about that. Let's see, and uh, then number 10, just like Dave Leatherman, only got 10. You know, and then, and then how much does a launch cost? How much does a shuttle cost? And, uh, you know, you always have a tap dance around that. Well, you know, you cost, the whole cost of building a shuttle or just part of the cost, the whole launch cost or just part of it and whatnot. So anyhow, but those are the questions you get asked and, uh, and are going to have to deal with. Well, as, uh, as Pat said, uh, uh, Hugh isn't here, but, uh, but we're going to uh, uh, reshuffle what well, originally was our schedule a little bit because of some time constraints. But uh, we're going to march uh, now right into the, the Pioneer, uh, Space Pioneer Awards. And uh, it's a, uh, it recognizes those individuals' uh, accomplishments uh, that have helped open the, the space frontier. And, and we have a number of them tonight. Uh, the award is a, a rendering. Okay, the, uh, the award is a rendering of the moon and pewter on a very nice stand uh, with a properly inscribed uh, uh, documentation on it. And uh, it's, 
particularly appropriate and, and made and, and delivered to people that have made a, a significant uh, contribution to eliminating barriers of uh, space exploration. Uh, we have uh, three of them tonight. Uh, the first one is uh, our uh, Space Pioneer Award uh, for the uh, Activist of the Year. And uh, the recipient of this is a, a lifelong enthusiast, uh, space enthusiast and a member of our board of directors. And uh, he is uh, also very well versed in uh, a commercial world uh, community. He has uh, been vice president membership, uh, of membership services and executive director of the Health Ind Industry Dis Distributors Association. Uh, he currently is uh, the vice president of uh, Simtech Commerce Incorporated, which is a leading provider of, uh, of e-commerce solutions uh, for medical supply industry. Uh, he serves uh, as the uh, Assistant Secretary uh, for the uh, Executive Committee of NSS. And uh, you heard Pat talk about uh, all the tremendous work that's been done on strategic planning and uh, the uh, NSS uh, roadmap to, uh, to space. Uh, and uh, he has been a key player in pulling all that together. So I'm very proud and pleased to uh, present our uh, Space Activist of the Year Pioneer Award to Chris Pankritz. child. 
Send Chris into space. If he can go, anybody can go, and they're already there ahead of us. When he started out, I thought he was going to be way too humble, but uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to have to follow up and, uh, and and cover for that. But he really has. He, he's been really the ringleader of, uh, of getting the strategic planning rolling uh, that both Pat and I addressed earlier and, uh, and getting the uh, roadmap uh, put together. And uh, there's a long ways to go on that. And uh, he's going to be right up front there uh, keeping uh, all the rest of us with our nose to the grindstone so it gets done. Okay, the next uh, Space Pioneer Award is for education. And uh, if, if any of you have uh, read the May issue of Ad Astra, you'll be familiar with our uh, our next uh, awardees. Uh, the group is uh, among a growing list of students who uh, have the unique opportunity to participate in the NASA Reduced uh, Gravity Student uh, Opportunities Program, uh, which is administered uh, by the uh, Texas uh, Space uh, Grant Consortium. And uh, they get to fly on the, the NASA KC-135, uh, which is the zero-g airplane that flies to parabolas where you go like that. Uh, they get the pilots of those planes. You get fired if they if they were commercial pilots, but uh, they get paid uh, extra for doing it for NASA. So uh, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, present uh, the uh, Space uh, Pioneer Award for Education to the Floating Illini team and uh, for their contributions for uh, sharing the vision uh, for the, of the next generation. Please come forward. And then right now, come forward, uh, we have a, a tape. sometimes as high as, usually as high as 1.8. Uh, keep going, climb 10,000 uh, 10, feet before they started, and they start to nose over, eventually. Here they go. And uh, at this point, the occupants are getting, uh, floating off the floor, bouncing around on the inside, padded walls of the KC-135, performing their experiments and having a wonderful time. Uh, it's just about ended, and they're now climbing up, and they start doing the 1.8G pull up again. Music called the 2G because, you know, government work. And so then they repeat it all over again. They do approximately 30 of these on flight. At least they did for our year. Previous year they did 40. Uh, who knows what they're going to do next year? Uh, here's some of our teammates. That's Jenny. That's Willie sitting on our equipment. Jenny down there is working on, our, on the Clues experiment that uh, I had the good fortune to be project leader on. And uh, doing their thing, investigating the use of the flow characteristics of miscible fluids and microgravity, ejecting water into test tubes full of oil. Willie has never been on a plane before this. <laughs> He's going to be so disappointed next time. <laughs> so, kicking the flight directors. They just ended the microgravity. John Yannick yells that so you don't hurt yourself. That's Graham McDonald. Here, don't do an educational outreach program where they go out to different places, mostly schools, and they teach them what it is like to float in space by using boys. That's uh, our second team, uh, sound chemistry and microgravity, looking at using also sound to drive chemical reactions. My name is Melissa Bradley, and this is Joanna Metzler with the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign, and we are working on the sound chemistry and microgravity experiment. Over here and over here, we have a video camera that we're using to record the experiment. Over here, we have the sound
notice the difference. This is also, we were also taking pictures for educational outreach so that we can show other kids how this changes in gravity and for microgravity and so hopefully they can understand exactly what the difference is. Okay, this is a gyroscopic motion. This gyroscope is actually, it seems like it's rotating back away from the cockpit, but actually it's keeping the very same uh, orientation to the horizon and the earth. And the plane that we are in is actually rotating, so that's what's going on here. We rotated about through 90 degrees. <laughs>
1997, she joined the uh, Senate Appropriations Committee for membership on the Armed Services Committee and uh, on the uh, Commerce, uh, Science, Transportation Committee, uh, gave her a strong voice in aerospace issues. And in 1999 uh, is uh, what she's being recognized for, where she really stood up and counted uh, in uh, the, uh, the NASA uh, funding uh, process. Uh, on September 9th in 99, uh, the, uh, the future of uh, NASA was uh, uh, looked like it was in uh, jeopardy when the House passed a bill uh, that uh, cut NASA's budget by nearly a nearly billion dollars. And uh, in the, uh, the following months, she uh, and some of her colleagues in the Senate uh, ran a uh, extensive campaign uh, recognizing the, the value of space to get that money reinstated and, and working uh, follow-up uh, work uh, with the House of Representatives uh, uh, ultimately uh, resulted uh, in, uh, in those efforts and, and others uh, within the, the Congress uh, in that money being restored uh, back to the NASA budget. So in uh, recognition of, uh, of that support uh, for a uh, policy that increases space access for everyone, uh, we recognize uh, Kay Bailey Hutchinson uh, for the Legislative uh, Space Pioneer Award. And uh, as I said, she was unable to be here, but uh, she did uh, provide us uh, with a short video uh, with uh, her acceptance uh, comments. Thank you so much for the Space Pioneer Award. I've been captivated by space exploration since I was a young television reporter in Houston covering the heroics of the Apollo 11 astronauts and the moon landing in 1969. Our space program has no better friend than the National Space Society. Last year, NASA faced a devastating cut in funding by the House of Representatives. In the 1800s, it would have been akin to stopping the Transcontinental Railroad in Nebraska instead of California. But together, we convinced Congress to reverse course and keep our space program strong. Space is more than the final frontier. It's a billion frontiers. Space has endless opportunities for explorers, entrepreneurs, and inventors. The high-tech defense, medical, and weather research will catapult our nation into a more prosperous and safer 21st century. Pure, powerful medications created in the sky, for example, will mean longer and healthier lives below. As a member of the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, I'll continue to seek ways to promote space exploration, harnessing the energy of the public and private sectors. I strongly support the space station and shuttle and their many opportunities. This month, at my urging, the Senate Appropriations Committee approved $45 million for upgrading and staffing of the space shuttle. This funding will keep the shuttle running from Earth to orbit for another 12 years. We must also learn from our mistakes in space. We must not fall back after failures, but move forward with vigor and enthusiasm. The pioneer spirit has taken America high and far since Alan Shepard was launched into orbit this month in 1961. We will keep the United States number one in space. In this millennium, whoever controls space controls the future. That must always be America. Thank you very much. Uh, the, uh, the chapters are, are the lifeblood uh, of our organization. 
And uh, while uh, many of our members are widely uh, distributed uh, geographically uh, they, uh, and we're all able to be here, uh, we do have welcome the chapter members uh, that uh, do participate in this event and other events around the, the country uh, and uh, throughout the year. And like I say, they're the lifeblood uh, of our organization. And to tell us more about this, uh, we have the uh, Vice President for Chapters, uh, Greg Allison, who, uh, if you were at the convention last year, you will notice that he's a mere shadow of his former self. And uh, he's trying to travel in the
uh, calls all the chapters to try to get them to bring in their uh, annual reports so they can stay legal as a chapter and that kind of stuff. And it's a lot of work, a lot of phone calls, cost some money. So we set aside uh, a little money for about a thousand dollars for uh, reimbursement of some of those phone calls. Now we got eight regionals now in the states that do that, and plus uh, part of this is also to go to the international chapters coordinator. So you know there's a little formula we're dividing this. We're not going to divide this up. Uh, we've set aside a little money, a thousand dollars for chapter banners and signs, and this is intended to go to those chapters that are wanting to get out in public and press the flesh. Uh, you know, so they need a request from us if they want these signs, and you know what we'll do is the money runs out, you know, first come first serve. You know, it'll run out pretty quick. Uh, but what I'm really excited about is we set aside a little money for something called the Chapter Project Grant Fund. And the idea is to, to uh, use this process that I call the founder. It's a project incubator workshop to get uh, chapters involved in promoting their projects. And, and you know, we can, after chapters go through this process, uh, you know, we can make some small grants and, and seed money to get some of these projects moving. Projects are really the lifeblood of a chapter. I mean, if you want to do something and get people excited, you want to make things happen, take on a challenging project. Do something exciting. There are a lot of things you can do. Uh, like the line I guys just showed, those guys had a lot of fun with it, that's quite obvious. And, uh, you know, like the Halo program of Health 5, the Working on Health 5 Society does their lava tube research. Uh, there's a lot of good project ideas. Peter Cope is a, a wealth of, of, of concepts for project ideas, and he's sitting in the back of the room. And I've got a few ideas myself, and including, uh, you know, I've got, we've got another Halo rocket we're hoping to fly next year, and maybe we can fly a little student payload on that, somebody's going to do a payload. There's, there's a lot of possibilities, so uh, don't be a stranger. Come out and talk to us. We're going to do this uh, Foundry uh, online initially this year. And uh, we're trying to set up the website and everything to get this thing running. But uh, just just stay in contact with me because I want to see some things happen. I want to see you guys go out and have a lot of fun. Uh, another thing that, that some of the fun is going to is chapter teleconferences. We just created a chapters committee in which we're trying to get several different people in society, uh, their leaders in the chapter arena, working together to try to promote our goals and get our uh, needs accomplished. And so these are all new things, and it provides new opportunities, I hope, for what chapters can do and accomplish and how they can work with the National Space Society. And uh, one thing that I would really like to see is that uh, we get better communications within the society. And, you know, we're all off everywhere spread out and, and, and often our communication lines are small and thin. You know, one regional coordinator talking to the chapter is a pretty thin line of communication. And every now and then we have these ISDCs in them, but they, they just kind of go place to place. And not everybody can come, of course. You know, here we are in, in, in the great city of Tucson, and we got some few hundred of you out here, but there's a lot of people up in Rochester, New York, or wherever that just really couldn't get here tonight, unfortunately. And uh, so what I like to see is more regional conferences. I know that scares a lot of people. Conferences, oh God, you know, that's a lot of work. Not necessarily, don't have to be. Uh, I wrote a little chapter's plan, and if anybody wants it and had not had it already, I'll be happy to give you a copy and send you about this. It kind of puts an outline out there for how you can do regional conferences that are essentially have a cookie cutter type program and that, that you don't have to kill yourself to, to execute. I mean, it's a lot of uh, pre can workshops and things like that. So. Uh, uh, talk to me come, uh, or, or some of the other chapter leaders and, and let's figure out how to make some of these things happen to get our people in the society talking with each other, meeting with each other. I hope that some of our board members will be going to some of these, that uh, the chapters will be working together and that we get the communications in the society better dressed top to bottom and side to side. Uh, you know, face to face is a whole lot better way to work than sometimes email, which we always make the wrong assumptions, take things wrong, get mad at each other. Start throwing things. So, uh, if we can stay away from that, that'll be good. Well, with all that, I'll move on to the chapters of awards here tonight. Uh, I'm going to trip over this board. Of course, that might give us some entertainment. <laughs> uh, chapter Excellence Awards. The NSS Chapter of Excellence Award is the highest award a chapter can receive. It is given to the chapters whose pursuit of the NSS vision is representative of the best that our chapters have to offer. And this year, again, I picked two winners for this award category. 
One of the chapter members dreamed of the day in which space tourism uh, would be uh, going gangbusters. He wanted to travel in space himself. This chapter member became widely recognized as an advocate of space tourism. And he did a lot of organization conferences and so forth toward that end. Unfortunately, he met with an untimely death. On the 20th of December last year, this chapter sent the remains of Charlie Carr into orbit. For their vision to carry out uh, a launch project like this, the Explorer Award goes to the Orange County Space Society. Anybody here from Orange County Space Society? Stand up, please.
myself about Elaine switching chapters. She restarted the New York chapter. That's something to be proud of. Provide some good music here tonight. All right, this chapter plays the booths at local science fiction conventions, provided public lectures, uh, uh, and have an active community uh, speakers bureau. For community service, we recognize Oasis. So many hardworking and capable members. Uh, this year we're going to uh, continue um, our outreach with uh, programming at uh, as many as three local science fiction conventions. Thanks again. Thanks, man. Well, it's very active. We're just doing stuff all the time. It's a phenomenal amount of things. And so, uh, you know, it's a good example uh, of chapters getting the word out, the vision to the public. Uh, that they carry our message home. You know, it's kind of like being the missionaries of our vision. That's what the chapters do. Uh, this chapter is developing a means to inspire youth. Last year, they played a key role in actually establishing a school which is uh, involved in, in teaching science and space education to young kids. Uh, it's a regular school, and they played a key role in getting started. The Education Award goes to the San Antonio Space Society. Uh, 
One of the key senators in this budget process was Senator Bond of Missouri. Uh, he said that nobody in this district had any interest in the NASA budget. Nobody cared. I don't hear from nobody. That's what he said. But we have a chapter in this district. <laughs> and this chapter figured out somehow to, to, to get a hold of a, a few thousand people and mobilize. They had faxes and phone calls and stuff going in. And guess what? Senator Bond didn't support the cuts. <laughs> Political activism, we recognize the heart of American chapter. Anybody here from that chapter? Well, again, we'll mail the certificate, and uh, that's just phenomenal. You know, political activism is something, I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that. That's something that, that chapters can easily do. And we've got a pro another program we're going to start up with chapters. We're uh, going into the uh, congressional district home offices. That's something a chapter can do quite easily. And uh, we've got uh, a letter being written, well, actually legislation hopefully being written in the policy committee uh, as a proposal to be promoted in this way. Go in and see your congressman. Uh, go talk to them. They're approachable. Go to their offices, talk to their aides. They're approachable. And uh, hopefully we'll come up with some packages and get this program going and give you something to work with. But don't wait on that. Go forward and talk to these people. Tell them to support space. Public outreach is one category where National Space Society chapters really shine. And we do a lot in this area. This is how we, we reach out to the public around the world and spread our good news, our gospel about human settlements in space. A number of chapters have a very active outreach programs. Uh, Oasis being one of them. Seth was telling me about some of the things they're doing. Uh, Orange County does a lot of outreach. Uh, I mean, I read their annual reports, and it's just amazing things we've got going on. Well, and so uh, this chapter has been active in reaching out to the public by doing mall displays and things like that. For public outreach, this time we recognize the New Mexico Space Society. Say something about your program? What it takes is one on one, whatever opportunity arises, don't be bashful. Um, we are doing this with a lot of dedicated people. We just are looking for someone to say, hey, could you take this exhibit to the mall? Could you do this? Could you do that? Don't be ashamed to go out and approach people. Because if race to space is going to be run one person at a time through individual contact. And if you want to know more how to do this, we have an excellent person, Chris, uh, who uh, got the award for us uh, from the board, but he knows how to go out and teach you how to motivate people. So it's up to us if we want to make this dream a reality. Also, come to Albuquerque next year for the ISDC. <laughs> Now we've created a new category uh, for awards to honor chapters. This category honors those chapters that provide services and assistance to other chapters. About time we did something like that, yeah? So, so maybe we can encourage us all to work together a little better. As some of you may know, and I mentioned a little bit ago, you know, that if you read this chapters plan, I strongly advocate this concept of regional conferences as, as a mean to increase communications within our society. Last year, this chapter hosted the chapter summit in its region, which was a precursor to establishing one of these regional conferences. This summit was ran as a chapter leadership training workshop. For service to the chapters, we recognize the Huntsville, Alabama L5 Society. Ryan? Well, yeah. By doing this, I hope a lot of you will get involved and do these regional conferences. That's what I'm trying to stimulate here. <laughs> Scheming. <laughs> I have no idea what to say here. This is a complete surprise. Uh, all I can say, I guess, is uh, this is extremely easy to do. Uh, a summit is much easier than a regional conference. It essentially came together in one month in about 
getting a hotel, getting two rooms, one to eat and one to meet, and yeah. eat meat. And it worked. It was great. It was one weekend, and it was a, it was a fantastic time for all of us. Thank you, Ryan. You know, like you said, that was easy, and, and that was a summit. Uh, the regional conferences are, are, that we're planning, we intend to be just about as easy as that. Uh, there are things you can do that, that, that reduces the difficulty. They don't have to be mini ISDCs. See, that's where everybody gets all tripped up. They try to put, put on a mini ISDC, and that'll kill you. And so a lot of the people that were doing the regional conferences before got burned out. But what we really need to do is get together and communicate and work together and support each other. And that's what I'm trying to get across. Now, we've redefined the old Service to Society Award as a service to the NSS Award. This award honors those chapters which provide a service to NSS at large. Uh, this, recipient, oh, me, yeah, this recipient is selected by the Executive Director of the Society. The principal in this chapter uh, is taking the lead to the, the developing the Highland Award. I mean, they had to get a new vendor to do this award. And he had to do a lot of work and research and a lot of, get a lot of quotes. He had to chase people all over the place just to, to come up with something that would both be nice, and it is quite nice as you can see sitting up here on this table, and be something that we could afford. <laughs> Naturally, of course. And uh, he's up, that, this chapter is also actively involved in uh, reconstituting the Von Braun Award. I think the, the, the old stuff we were working with, uh, I shouldn't say old, but you know, the, the things that we were using to build up that award uh, apparently are not available anymore. So, uh, so they're, they're chasing and pursuing that too. So for services to the society, the National Space Society, we recognize the Austin Space Frontier Society. Anybody here from, from those guys? John. Extend a special uh, thanks and appreciation to Mr. John Strickland for his personal effort in this work. John? I can remember when the All Five Society was a young society, and I would get a letter in the mail, a personal message to you from Robert Heinlein. Now that got your attention, anybody of you who are Heinlein readers. So we owe a very large debt to Robert Heinlein for helping this very young and struggling society to become, along with the other, other the NSI, the, the NSS of today. And it seems to me very fitting that when Robert died in 1998, that we established a Robert Heinlein Award. And that award was established, the first award was presented in uh, 1989. And I will continue to provide this service, which I very much enjoy working on the award, and I'm glad that Assistance Society. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we have another category of awards. Meritorious Service Awards. These Meritorious Service Awards are given to chapters that show consistent quality in their activities. And this year's winners are uh, for Public Outreach, Baltimore Metro Chapter of the National Space Society. chapter last year got the uh, Community Service Award. I, there may be a few people from some of these chapters here, and I'm just going to go through these, and I'll give a certificate to South Africa if, if there's anybody here from any of these chapters. I don't know anybody from, from these, though, so if they're here, I haven't seen anybody, but it's possible for someone here. Anyway, I'll go through this. Uh, this next chapter, last year, got Chapter of the Year Award, and probably deserve it again, because they, 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 the activity report they put out is about that thick, and it takes me like four days to read it. <laughs> And that's is the, the Wichita chapter of the National Space Society for Community Service. And uh, I mentioned Middle Tennessee earlier doing uh, their public access television. There's another group that's doing a program uh, that's under development right now in which uh, uh, the presentation talks about the risk of asteroids, comets and things like that striking the Earth and as far as what that means to us and what we might be able to do to mitigate that risk. And so, so uh, for publicity and media, 
We give one of these to the DCO5 Society. Stuff. They've got another cable access TV program just started, and so I'm really looking forward to see what comes out of that. Uh, this is the NSS Atlanta publicity and media. And then we have other groups, other chapters that are involved in political activism. This chapter uh, decided. Well, they've been quite a buffer for a while on this uh, space week, space day type uh, activity. And they got proclamations from half the nation of governors for this uh, anniversary of the Apollo moon landing, 30th anniversary last year. And so for political activism, Utah Space Society. Uh, great age of exploration 
uh, in each great age of exploration, a small handful of humans play a very key role in uh, transcending their own era, becoming timeless symbols of achievement and discovery. Uh, men and women uh, who have extended the range of uh, humanity's reach into unknown worlds and uh, seeing uh, unseen vistas and the, the process has brought back uh, their, uh, their journeys, a uh, new understanding of our universe. And one such pioneer is uh, obviously uh, Neil Armstrong. Uh, he, uh, actually Apollo 11 was uh, his uh, third adventure into space. Uh, early uh, in his career he was uh, one of the X-15 uh, pilots that actually achieved astronaut status by flying the X-15 over uh, 50 miles uh, into the essentially edge of space. He didn't get orbital but, uh, but uh, reached uh, the milestone of uh, space. Uh, after that uh, he uh, joined the NASA program. Uh, he was uh, commander on Apollo uh, 8, excuse me, Gemini 8, and then uh, obviously uh, the uh, commander and the first person who set foot on the moon. Uh, in his years uh, after he left NASA, uh, he was a teacher, a pilot, a communicator, an aviation entrepreneur. Uh, he always, uh, as you're as you well aware, at least anybody that, that knew him, uh, and I did, fortunately had the honor to, to know him quite well, he was a very uh, uh, humble uh, individual and really shunned the spotlight. But uh, instead he sought uh, knowledge and understanding uh, in the complex world of uh, aeronautics and uh, astronautics. And uh, those uh, in the room who will return to the moon in the future will build on the legacy that uh, he developed in his many years uh, in the aerospace business. So uh, for that, the National Space Society uh, is pleased to recognize Neil Armstrong for a lifetime achievement uh, and a true pioneer of the space age with its uh, year 2000 timeline award. <laughs> and all of you have uh, been with us. Uh, he did, uh, did send a letter and uh, said, I'm very uh, much honored uh, by your invitation to accept the Heinlein Award. Unfortunately, I have a long time uh, commitment uh, for that date and will be unable to be with you. So I must regret, regret, regrettably decline. Please convey my sincere appreciation to those responsible for my nomination uh, and have the very best wishes for success at the conference and the banquet. Uh, sincerely, Neil. Okay, moving right along, uh, we have a, a few more events. Uh, that was the last award, but there, there are a few more other things. Uh, to uh, successfully uh, have a convention like this, it, it requires uh, support and sponsorship. And, uh, uh, and uh, our corporate sponsor uh, for this event, uh, as uh, they were last year, is uh, SGI. Uh, that's an acronym. And those of you in the space business uh, know there are a lot of acronyms. And uh, there, there's, I always tell people there are three phases of, of working in the business with a lot of acronyms. When you're first there, you don't know what the acronym is. You don't know what it stands for. Then you're there and you learn them all. You know what they are, you know what they stand for. And then you're there a little longer and you know what they are, but you don't remember what they stand for anymore. So uh, SGI stands for Silicon Graphics something. And uh, <laughs> I've been there too long, I know what it is. Uh, they, uh, we have uh, with us tonight uh, their uh, lead systems engineer, Francis Grovers. And uh, uh, he is uh, from the Houston area. And uh, he and, and his company are responsible for the visuals in the various simulators, and believe me, I, I, they're marvelous. Uh, I trained uh, to rendezvous with the satellites and stuff, looking at a, a, basically it looked like a shoebox, and now you can read the serial numbers on the simulated boxes on the simulated space station because of the type of work uh, that Francis and his company does. And we're really pleased to have him here tonight and uh, really appreciate uh, their sponsorship. Francis. Silicon Graphics is delighted to be the corporate sponsor for the International Space Development Conference, and I wanted to introduce some of the uh, team that was involved in uh, bringing both the exhibit and the sponsorship to you this year. Uh, first of all, Gene Fritz, who's sharing our table over there, uh, who's assisting with our, uh, one of our marketing teams. This event most definitely would not have happened without the assistance of Amy Madden, 
who is our uh, marketing director in the Washington, D.C. office, who's been working both directly with the ISDC folks and with our people within Silicon Graphics to secure the funding and to secure the, the exhibits and all the, and uh, definitely would not have happened without her. Uh, also, this year we had Jared Bobbies, Mark Nolte, and Dan Rinald come down and help us out with the booth. And you saw them and met them uh, if you came over and uh, saw what we brought here this time. Uh, we also need to tell you that there are a number of people involved in the National Space Society within Silicon Graphics. Um, uh, Anthony Robbins, who is the president of Silicon Graphics Federal Systems, who is the gentleman that I work for, uh, uh, is a member of the NSS Aerospace Advisory Council. He values that very highly and talks about it to everybody he meets. And, the efforts of the society in making a convert out of him. Uh, we also can this year again have the support of Janet Matsuda, who's the head of our advanced graphics division and the, the, the head of the factory that's responsible for the wonderful graphics that we're able to put out, and to the broadband group uh, who uh, produce our media systems, who made a very generous, uh, very generous donation to the uh, to the cause this year, and also Lens Equipment and Mark Nolte, an expert, to come out and give a nice presentation this morning. So we are very um, pleased and delighted to tell you that as of this time, Silicon Graphics has donated $60,000 to the National Space Society in, uh, over the last 12 months. Assembly facilities in Pueblo with Bowie. We 
have the Air Force Academy, home of the fastest growing NSS chapter. <laughs> and uh, we're expecting big participation from the Air Force Academy at our conference. Uh, the timing is very good. Memorial Day weekend is right after graduation. So other than the seniors, the, uh, the lower three classes should be free, uh, still at the academy and not yet on their summer assignments. So we're expecting a big attendance from the Air Force Academy chapter. Uh, the hotel we selected is strategically located south of Denver, so that it will be very convenient for uh, people from Colorado Springs. And we're very much trying to draw local attendance both from the Denver and Colorado Springs areas. We will have tours of the Denver and, uh, and Colorado Springs uh, aerospace facilities. And uh, if you have more time, we would certainly encourage you to see Rocky Mountain National Park and some of the other Beautiful, uh, beautiful things to see in the Denver area. So we hope, hope that you will come to our conference and uh, we really look forward to putting it on. We very much appreciate this money. Uh, seed money is very valuable. It allows us to engage in early marketing activities. And I think it's, it's really nice that uh, the National Space Society set this up so that every year uh, the conference committees get a little bit of money to get started and uh, start getting the word out about our conference. Thank you very much. Hope to see you in Denver. Okay, uh, I, I think uh, David has another uh, presentation, and if uh, Bob Freeman would uh, come up. Uh, one of the problems with having various chapters do ISTCs is that they're all reinventing the wheel every time. And uh, I'd like to thank Ronnie LaJoy for helping with this problem. He's produced a very thick ISDC data book. And we received this maybe a little late to really help us that much. So we'd like to pass this on to Robert Freeman to help him organize next year. So this is the some of a lot of the experience of previous ISDCs. So, Robert, I'd like to present this to you. All right, well, thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, we, we can certainly uh, use, uh, we rely on your past experience, and that, that, that'll be a great help to us. Um, and uh, uh, I need to, uh, to thank uh, Mary Ann Dyson for providing our seed money for, uh, for ISDC 2001 from the Houston from the Houston Conference. And uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our honorary chairman who couldn't be here tonight, Harrison Schmidt. He has been extremely active in uh, helping develop this conference. He uh, shows up in most of our uh, planning meetings. He's, he's made lots of high-level contacts for us and bringing in uh, big name speakers. So um, uh, Harrison Schmidt has been a, a really great help to us. I uh, just wanted to tell you a few things about our conference also. Um, this, this conference is being co-hosted by the Albuquerque section of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and also by the, our, our NSS section of the New Mexico Space Society. Um, we have 21 supporting organizations at this point, and we're working on more. This includes um, Sandia National Labs, uh, Science Applications International, uh, uh, several other uh, government organizations and contractors, um, other engineering societies and, and civic organizations. So we're really trying to make this a uh, community-wide and, um, and, and statewide event, as, as, as well, of course, as an international event. Um, we, uh, our, our programming will be four, four uh, uh, parallel tracks. And uh, oftentimes, we'll have uh, five or six different events going on at a time. So we're really building a strong uh, uh, technical program. We have. Um, we're going to have a children's program and teacher's workshops, and we have some special symposia we're developing. We have an astrogeology symposium that, uh, that Harrison, Harrison Schmidt will be speaking at, and, uh, and it is being organized by the University of New Mexico Institute of, of Meteoritics, and uh, they, they are very enthusiastic about that program. We're also having a uh, space investment uh, seminar that's being run by Technology Ventures Corporation. And uh, they're going to um, uh, sort of coach people on how to uh, um, uh, develop their proposals for venture capitalists. And then the next day, they'll be able to um, actually uh, give a, each give a 10 minute presentation to a, to a group of venture capitalists. Um, we're going to have a workshop on uh, 
on uh, asteroids and, uh, and comets, including planetary protection, um, exploration, and, uh, and mining. Um, we're, uh, we're also uh, going to have some extremely interesting geo functions. Uh, one of our, our dinner functions will be uh, progression of manned space flight, and uh, uh, Harris, Mitch, Harris Instrument will be speaking there, and he's also uh, uh, working hard at, at getting other, uh, other astronauts involved in this, and if all the people that he's uh, contacting uh, come through, we'll have astronauts from Gemini through space stations, so um, it, that'll be a very interesting banquet. Also, we uh, are having a salute to uh, 2001 a Space Odyssey, and uh, we are, uh, Fred Ordway is going to be, uh, who was the technical advisor to that movie, will be speaking. Uh, we, uh, we just found out during this conference that Bob McCall, the space artist who did the, uh, you might know, did the, the movie poster for 2001, is also going to be involved. And uh, um, he's going to do the cover art, original cover art for our, uh, for our program. To, uh, to some of the national, uh, NASA uh, flight centers and uh, throughout industry. We've gotten it to people in the uh, European Space Agency, to NASDA, to uh, people in Russia. But uh, we can also use your help in distributing it to other parts of NASA and, and contractors if, if, if uh, you would like to help with that. Uh, I can uh, send it to you in electronic form, so please contact me and I'll, we'll get this distributed as, as much as we can. Uh, let's see, uh, we're going to have some very interesting tours also, something a little different. We're going to have an overnight tour um, uh, starting Wednesday before the conference, uh, going down to Alamogordo, the International Space Hall of Fame, uh, spending the night in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and then touring White Sands Missile Range and NASA White Sands, and on the way back to Albuquerque, going to the very large array radio telescope facility. Um, in Albuquerque, we're going to have tours on Kirtland Air Force Base, including the, um, uh, the National Atomic Museum and the, the uh, Space and Missile Center uh, Satellite Control Facility. And also, um, uh, we're, we're going to have a nighttime tour of the, the Starfire Optical Range, which the Air Force uses to image satellites. And the, the time I took the tour of it was very interesting. You can see Hubble, Hubble Space Telescope go over. And um, it, it's, it's really an interesting tour. Uh, and finally, at the, uh, at the end of the conference, uh, we're going to have a, a bus trip up to Santa Fe. So um, uh, those are the tours we have planned. Um, we, we have a, a, a few sponsors lined up. Uh, the company I work for, uh, SAIC, is helping out, and uh, Via Cooper Aerospace is also uh, providing some assistance. And of course, we're, we're still looking uh, for more sponsorship, but we've gotten off to a good start there. Um, and. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to come up to our hospitality suite. Uh, well, I was going to say starting at 10 o'clock, but um, <laughs> uh, as, as, soon as, as, as soon as we're finished here, and uh, you'll have one more chance to sign up for our raffles for the uh, uh, Navajo Kachinas. The one on, uh, on my left here is, uh, is a raffle. It's a dollar a ticket, uh, six for five dollars. And the other one is, uh, is open to people who do early registration. So if you plan on attending the conference, uh, um, please go ahead and uh, sign up before we do the raffle and you'll have a chance to, to take the Navajo uh, uh, Pacino home with you. And I hope all of you can make it. That's, that's all I have. Okay, so uh, I think we'd uh, like uh, uh, <laughs> Bill Weigel to come up and uh, as he comes up, uh, on, on behalf of uh, NSS, uh, we would uh, certainly like to Thank you and your team for the outstanding uh, conference you put on. Uh, I wasn't able to do what I heard. A lot, a lot of feedback that the tours were great uh, and uh, the presentations were great. And I think everything ran really smooth, and that's uh, attributed to your leadership and your whole team. Thanks.
this name tag. I said, ask me about. I said, no, this is a great way to get conversations going. People are coming from all over the country. They don't know each other. They haven't seen each other for a year. It's a way to break the ice. It gets things going. There's, there's a people conference. You've got people who want to talk to each other. Let's get them talking as fast as possible. I insist. I absolutely insist. Red letters, low ones. No, they came through. We got the tag. But that's not the truth. See, my secret plan all along was on the day of the main registration. I went over to the Clickerfish table and had to mark out about and print, don't ask me. <laughs> and um, Wayne and Bob, let me tell you, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about the, the ask me a bit when I was thinking about a committee, and I'm sure a lot of the questions they got. Jeanette, uh, Jake, who's probably heard all she wants to hear about uh, where's the tour buses? Where's the children's room? And where's Tom? <laughs> um, ben Nault, you did that web page? Wow, that's pretty cool. 2010. 2000. Um, Dick Fredrickson, you've probably heard several times. Are there snakes on this trail? <laughs> Ken Morris, you built the poster, you want to live forever, you did that gravity well painting? What else do you do? Ingrid Saber, and all the details, every time, perfect, the hospitality suite, anything else needed to be done? Wolf Force, no doubt asked, now just what space station did you get that idea for the mural? Gary Meckler, just how amazingly fast you got Jim Goldie to come down and leave us off here good. And I'd especially like to note the fact that another major aspect of being conference point is getting it off to the right start. Registration is so important. Sandy Adamson and David Grant Edison were there the whole time and had complete control. Card block. They told everybody, including me, what to do concerning the registration. And it worked. I've been to virtually every one of these conferences. And I can't speak for you, but I can only speak for myself. But I think this has got to be one of the best registrations I've ever seen. And I'd like to give it a And then another note also, Wayne and Bob take note. When you're asking your right-hand person Make sure you've got someone you absolutely trust and know that will set you straight when you're getting a stern. And in that sense, Tom Jacobish has been an absolute root. And he did so much at the beginning, it was wonderful that by consensus, and I know this for a fact from the registration table, the most single asked question referred to from this is, where's Tom? <laughs> and then, of course, I know Tom's most asked question to him was basically, where's everything? <laughs> and where is everybody? And where do we get this? And all that it takes the thorn. And the last thing is, uh, last two things, is the uh, absolute essential part of volunteers work very diligently on getting volunteers do what it takes. And we are really fortunate to have some really fantastic volunteers. Um, Veronica Zabler and her entire crowd from Phoenix and actually the statewide Mars Society came down and did just a fantastic job. Stacy Scaler all the way from the Grand Canyon and Dave Lyle from the UVA with technical expertise and the other folks who just came in when the time was needed. I really appreciate it. And truly, having the volunteers is absolutely a joy. Please hand for that too. Okay, then lastly, let's just wrap this up and get back to the hospitality suites.
By tradition, we had uh, listed because of the past, uh, it was a tradition to pass the past of dueling hospitality suites. This came from a tradition where you didn't really know next year's uh, site of the convention until the convention before. Jeffrey, you might even remember how long ago that tradition was changed, and for good reason, the board, board the last thing they wanted was to be all the back political angles that happened at the convention to come up with a decision on the spot. So they, they rightly chose to do this a little more in advance. But for us attendees, we sure lost out on the dueling hospitality suites because they would battle with the greatest chance to get the most people. It was wonderful to go back and forth. So tonight, we are going to be just doing a cooperative deal and everybody can flow back wherever the traffic pattern leads them and the sound levels are most smoothing. And of course, there is also an event at the forum room and you want to check it out. And last of all, if you're anything like my size, I'm going to put my fake spacesuit over here and sometime during the evening, if anybody wants to come down and, and just throw it on enough so you can have the mural in the backdrop, we'll shoot a picture of you and get it on the website. <laughs> and uh, one last uh, friend I'd like to mention is a guy who came in last minute and uh, is help me create this website. He's upstairs loading pictures as we speak. And they'll find the web room just off the side of the hospitality suite. So his name is Charles. We want to say hi. So I appreciate you working with it. And I don't really have to say much about that web room. It's a proof in principle. I think anybody with an understanding is we're all catching on the internet. It's big news. It's going to be on everybody's mind how you manipulate it. The possibilities are endless. And once again, let me thank SGI specifically for the help they did. They're going to be involved this any time in the continuing future. Wow. <laughs> Using the machines to far, far greater aspects than I did. It's just going to be so cool. Possibilities are endless, and we're going to have a blast with it. So let's start off and close this and get up and have some fun. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.